Here is the most frightening paragraph I read in today's newspapers. In the Sydney Morning Herald, in a report on modelling by energy consultancy Green Energy Markets, they're global warming believers, on the ABDC government's plan to replace our coal-fired generators with wind and solar power. I read that this modelling worked out that 32 gigawatts of new generation of wind and solar is required to achieve the government's 2030 target. But only 23 gigawatts looks like being built, and that, it says, would leave a 9 gigawatt gap. So we would have only two-thirds of the new green electricity we need in just six years from now. Now, something will turn up, we're told. Maybe the states will chip in. I mean, is that really how you run a 21st century economy? So all the more ridiculous that the government just blindly rejects the opposition's plan to drop this irrational ban on nuclear power. Opposition leader Peter Dutton today challenged the Prime Minister to debate him on this, but Anthony Albanese refused. We need a clear pathway. It's why the Prime Minister should stand up and debate with me the issue of nuclear and energy in this country. I'll meet him at the press club wherever he wants. So now he's saying we'll have big nuclear reactors. He's not saying where they're going to be. He's not saying who will pay for them. He's not saying how long it will take. So why not debate him? Except, why not well, debate well, him? Why don't you debate him? well, it's um, it's thin air. <laughs> Joining me is my Tuesday panel, Will Kingston, host of Australiana, a weekly podcast from The Spectator on politics and culture, and Anika De Giorgio, host of our new chat show, The Jury, every Sunday here at Sky at 8pm and on primetime Fridays at 7pm. Um, Danika, should Albanese debate Peter Dutton on nuclear power? Oh, well, Andrew, it's a no-brainer. Of course he should be debating Peter Dutton on nuclear power. <laughs> we need to have some debate in this country about how we're going to keep the lights on. And there's Albo today with his Akubra in complete denial once again. And he constantly tells us, well, you know, nuclear, it's not going to work here in Australia, yet doesn't actually have any evidence to suggest that that is the case. How is it that nuclear works so well in 31 other countries around the world, the UK, the US and Japan, Yet apparently it's not good enough here. Yet this renewables push is costing us billions of dollars. Electricity bills are still going up and they are still unreliable. I mean, look here in New South Wales late last year in the middle of a heat wave. We were told here in Sydney to turn off our dishwashers, turn off our washing machines because the grid simply wouldn't cope. AEMO has already warned that Australia will not be able to build and install enough renewable energy generation to meet that 2030 target. And yet, Andrew, as we know, we have some of the world's largest reserves of uranium just sitting here waiting to be used. So, yes, Albanese should be out there debating. <laughs> it's a, it is something we need. We need to have this discussion. It's inevitable. All right. That was too easy. The question was too easy, so I'll have to ask Will the hard one. <laughs> Will, for 10 to 30 years now, maybe longer, we've been told it's going to take too long to get nuclear industry up. Is it realistic when we're now, now told again it'll take anything from 10 to 30 years to get going? Well, at the same time, Andrew, they're telling us that the potential harms of climate change will be here in 50 to 100 years' time. So to me, 10 to 15 years to get a nuclear reactor up and running seems like a pretty good bet. Look, the people who don't like to debate their beliefs are religious fanatics, and this is a religion for the left in Australia. They'll tell you it's that it will take too long, despite the fact that the harms will take considerably longer to arrive. They'll tell you it's about cost, and yet at the same time, the left doesn't care about the cost of anything. More debate is a good thing in a democracy, uh, and I suspect that debate would lead to a reasonable position that nuclear is a part of an energy mix and it mitigates risk if other parts of that energy mix don't work. We're not going to get to that point because this is purely about ideology for Albanese. It's about dogma. It's not about pragmatism. Well, let me stay with you for a sec, uh, you know, because we both uh, had a kick of the Albanese government. I need to prove that I'm even-handed. We're an ageing society <laughs> and uh, providing all this aged uh, home care for the future, all those extra aged care homes, going to cost us an extra $30 billion over the decade, we're told. Government's new review into this says the fairest way to pay for all that is to make better off Australians pay more for their aged care. More than 25% they have to pay today for residential care and just 5% for at-home care. What do you reckon? Good idea? Good idea that doesn't go far enough, Andrew. 
I think it's outrageous that we think about aged care as some sort of entitlement as opposed to a last gasp safety net. Uh, you shouldn't be able to take money off the government for aged care services and then pass down a house and assets and a big inheritance to your kids. I don't think we as Australians recognise the looming catastrophe of the increased cost of aged care in this country and we're going to need to do drastic things as we have a rapidly ageing population and lagging economic productivity. This, I think, is a good start. But again, we need to change the mentality from this being a benefit to being something which is very much the last resort. OK, that's two ticks for a, a Labor idea. Is it three uh, from you, uh, Danica? Look, I do like this policy, Andrew, uh, and, and just going off that, in the end, we are facing an ageing population. It is going to cost the taxpayer a lot of money. And, in fact, that latest report that came out found that over the next 40 years, the number of people over 80 is actually set to triple to more than $3.5 million. What I will say, though, is if you are going to be forking out your own money to pay for your aged care, then you expect that the services will be just as good. And right now we have a situation in this country where while we are trying to work with providers, to bring the standards up. There are a number of restrictions right now on providers to provide very good care, which is absolutely understandable, but they just simply don't have the workforce. They don't have uh, the people available to meet those demands right now. So you should be able to get what you pay for. The only other thing I would say is that this needs to be means tested uh, because I'm not sure yes, what yes. the government would define as who is wealthy. Oh, that's that, that, that decision they put off for the future. That's, that's when this gets hard. Um, Will, I think there's something I'm missing here. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has publicly apologised for posting a Photoshop picture of herself with the three children, the picture that news agency killed and refused to send. She said, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. Now, is this the big scandal I keep reading about? You know, the crisis of credibility for the palace. Uh, oh, my God, how can we trust anything they do again? In and of itself, no. But I'll tell you what, Andrew, just before coming on air, I watched a eulogy delivered by Christopher Hitchens for Alexei Navalny. Despite the fact, as, as your audience would know, that Hitchens died many years ago, the age of deep fakes, the age of doctored images and the age of AI being able to change what we see and hear is upon us. So whilst I think this issue probably isn't a big deal, the bigger issue is of the uh, the way that we consume information. And if the media is, is calling that out, then that's probably a good thing. I think that's true too. Um, just quickly, Danica, I'm out of time, but just what, what do you make of this? What have I missed? I actually disagree with Will. I think this just goes to show fake news. How are we supposed to believe anything that comes out of the palace from now on? If they wanted to put out a proper photo, get an independent photographer. I find it very difficult to believe <laughs> that Princess Kate is sitting there, Andrew, on her weekends, scrolling through, uh, f you know, these apps to try and change photos, adjusting the hands, adjusting her children's jumpers, Where the rocks does? on the floor. I mean, it's ridiculous. As if she's doing that, it it's just not plausible to me. Uh, I don't think it's a scandal, but I think... I think it's an absolute PR disaster for the Royals. Thank you to you both, Will Kingston, Danica DiGiorgio. Thank you very much.